So my next question is, so we call autism spectrum disorder a neurodiverging condition. So uh, in a, a condition like a neurodiversity, all the cells in the child would be, uh, you know, in a, in a divergent manner only, right? So my question is, how does uh, taking some cells from the pelvic region and injecting back to the same child is going to help the child? Because what the neurodivergence is present in the child will be present in the pelvic bone as well, right? So this is my understanding of how the, you know, cells and the nervous system works. So how this treatment approach will help a child with autism spectrum disorder. So can you uh, brief upon this? Yeah, actually, to be frank, there are two schools of thought even over here. See, okay. when you are doing any other transplant of bone marrow, like uh, to the liver or the targeted organ, if it is a liver or any other thing, which is pathologically damaged, like due to drinking or any other cirrhotic liver or anything, when you take stem cells from the same person and inject it to the kid or the person, it will definitely rejuvenate, rejuvenate the liver and give him new liver, new cells at least. So that will work. But in this stem cell therapy, there is still research going on and nobody knows what. So for now, what they're doing is they're taking it from the same child and giving it to the same child. Uh, there is research saying that uh, uh, autism runs in genes and family. Yes. So uh, if it is genetic makeup is same, so we don't know whether it will work or not. In that case, we have to take from a donor. Okay. who is not having any genetic makeup with uh, autism, pertaining autism, then we can transfer it. But uh, there is no actual evidence supporting any of this, to okay. be frank. Like, okay. not much research is being done in this way. There yeah. are few studies, very small uh, size, uh, sample okay. sizes, so we don't know how to actually justify what we talk. Okay, okay. So, uh, but the procedure in India is not uh, doing this. No, they are not getting the no. cells from the donor. They are not. They're taking the yes. cells from the uh, child and injecting back into the same child, right? Same child. Uh, okay. And so, they will not accept uh, cord blood cells. <laughs> this I wanted to say. They okay. say the cold chain would be broken uh, because it is not our institute. We will not uh, accept the cold chain, uh, whatever they are uh, doing. So, no, we won't accept cord blood. You have to undergo bone marrow aspiration from our institute. This is like ridiculous. Right, right. right. You already have a cord blood sample and you can extract some stem cells from that. Why don't you do that? They won't. Yeah, actually, we trust. We, we are in the generation that we are trusting. Fast moving. Uh, yeah, and we are trusting our, the internet. We are trusting Google. We are trusting Facebook to give us good result. Um, because uh, Niharika said, first thing that pops up is this thing. And usually what people think, okay, Facebook is promoting this person. So probably this person is better. It is good. But no, it's not like that. <laughs> the problem is even in Google, so when I started with a, a review of articles, review of literatures, the first result that popped up is 91% of children showed improvement in this kind of study. And uh, usually we trust Google, right? See, we Google is giving this in the first page and first the result is this. So probably Google is saying that this, so this is about this big. procedure. Uh, but uh, most people don't understand how research happens. That is why they fall for it. They might see a few, three, four uh, results and say, see, kid has improved. See, there are changes. 91% uh, kids improved. So probably my kid will be hopefully in the 91%. Um, but that doesn't happen. Why? Uh, before going to that, we should understand how research works. For example, uh, I can suddenly claim that I have this laddu and this laddu will cure cancer. I can claim, but no one will trust me. Then what will say? I say, I'll open a Facebook page. I'll have three, four reviews from people who have eaten these laddus. Then see, see, I have taken this one cage of these laddus. They're so uh, sweet. They're so good. And they cured my cancer. Who are these three, four people? We don't know. So even they that could be not, paid. They could be paid. Even Google reviews they are not paid. Yeah. So how it has to be officially done is I have to, um, if I'm if I'm uh, planning for proper therapy thing, I have to apply for a clinical trial. I have to say that I have invented this laddu and please grant me permission to go on with a clinical trial for this laddu. And then I have to compare, I have to give this laddu to 
a sample size that sample size has to be calculated by a statistician an appropriate sample size that he might say 30 people have to eat this laddu so cured or 100 people that sample size has to come through calculation correct then i have to compare with another 100 people who have received some other laddu some other laddu marika has made it has no properties it is just a simple laddu so these people should not know what they are taking otherwise there is a placebo effect if they think that okay i'm taking sadhu ma'am's uh, laddu which will cure everything the placebo effect will prompt them to say that they are seeing changes so they should not know whose laddu they are getting sadhvi's laddu or niharika laddu they should not know this is called blinding, blinding. they should random double blind laddu and we have it to should be take, double blinded yeah and we should we should take uh, uh, you know all the measures what their body says what their bp is everything we have to measure and Analyze that is how normally that to that to on a large scale population i cannot say that i gave this laddu to 10 people i gave niharika laddu to five people and this 10 people noted improvement i cannot say i cannot say that i have uh, tried this on 10 people and so that now i can try this on the entire world yeah, population yes, yes. the sample size has to be big enough so all the research i have gone through this promising result Uh, so there is one uh, study published in 2017 which said they have uh, they have promising results there are reduced sensory issues and improve eye contact but they were continually doing therapies as well now who is to say this is not due to therapy and uh, due to only stem cell because even kids who are getting only therapy show improvement that is how actually they should work right normally also kids will improve with therapies that is very good therapy so there are studies in which Uh, kids were receiving therapies and stem cell therapy and there were improvements so now how will you decide whether this improvement was due to stem cell therapy so in, in order to decide there there should be a population which receives only stem cell therapy and no uh, other therapies and there has to be a population which is receiving only occupational and speech therapy and there should be a comparison there are studies like that but the uh, the sample size is very less like 30 40 and 50 and in the end there are no statistically significant improvements okay a study successful only if there is a statistically significant improvement exactly. there is something called p which shows statistical significance if there is no static, uh, statistical significance there is no improvement also uh, in most of these studies there are no follow ups for example i have seen the child now like after 6 months of therapy is the improvement persistent for one year or two years with the same uh, single set uh, Yes, longitudinal It's, effect. Yes, that, kind of long. that should be there. That is the whole point of giving therapies consistently. Correct. You teach colors to a kid when he is two year old. You expect him to remember the colors till he is sixty or seventy years old. Correct. That is how it should be. It should exactly. not get interrupted in between or stopped in between. Even therapy or regress like or uh, no, regress. No, skills. it should not happen. Yes, it should not happen. Yes. So yes. that's how it is. Uh, okay. Teaching my son to be frank, teaching my son anything, any concept if I take, it takes me three to four months. If I'm teaching him how to count, like blindly he used to name the objects one, two, three, four, but that is not counting. To actually teach him count, he is supposed to give me three objects if I ask for a three object. Correct. So that took me like three to four months to actually yeah. teach him that counting is different and applying the counting is different. In yes. real life, yeah. So whatever it mostly is, mostly with road memory, children what they do ah. is they just keep saying the numbers, but they cannot exactly count how many chocolates are here or how many lattes are, are here. Yeah, that is what is applying what they have learned into learning. True. So what I started doing this is uh, to with with my kid is whenever he is eating biscuits or chocolates, I'll ask him how many have you eaten. So he started doing mind calculations and telling me four, three. this he recently started so it's like he actually is applying and doing mind calculation that is a big improvement for him correct so it's like okay. you have to do it consistently that is very important yeah consistency is the key so uh, as a closing note i would like both of you to uh, just answer so how can a parent with autism take an informed decision about uh, the best treatment approach or the treatment approach which will work for the child so what are you going to say so all the information we have given whatever we have known whatever the research says we have given 
So what would be your uh, personal, uh, you know, uh, takeaway to parents regarding taking an informed decision re uh, with regards to uh, autism spectrum? Yeah. Personally, I will say no. <laughs> I will say no. I have all the information. I have read everything. And uh, I have seen kids and I have seen my kid. No, I will say no. Don't go. Don't waste your money. Take that money, put in and uh, invest in something else. Like give it to some therapist. Take to some special school. You will see improvements. Okay. Okay. Your call, ma'am. Yeah. See, professionally, whatever we do, we have to analyze risk and benefit uh, ratio. Okay. So for you, if you are considering this kind of expensive treatment, uh, for you to be worth it, uh, you have to be like immensely rich. And there are rich yes. parents. If you think that you are already doing whatever professionally is advised, you are doing therapy, everything, support, uh, their special schools, if you are supporting in all possible ways, and if you have enough to spare for this, if you think that this money, they already have the trust fund for them when they are adults, and if you think that, okay, maybe let's try this, then only you consider Okay. There are other risks also. There are anesthesia related risks. There are surgical procedure related risks. And in one small study, 9% uh, of kids develop seizures post procedure. So these have to be considered. And if you think that you are ready to take a risk and it is not going to take a toll on your back, it is not a huge chunk of money which should be otherwise used for the child. If you have that spare money, then only try any kind of non proven additional, not just stem cell therapy any kind of additional therapies if you want to experiment if you have that kind of chunk uh, ready and that won't damage child's future prospect of getting a better treatment then only go ahead otherwise all right. no all right all right all right okay thank you so much uh, both of you so it threw a lot of light and uh, we discussed a lot of things i really hope uh, a lot of parents get benefited out of this and they uh, know what goes on before and after the procedure, uh, how the procedure is, the costs involved, and uh, the research behind it, what the research has to say about this. So I really hope it benefits a lot of uh, parents and it reaches the right kind of potential audience. So thank you so much for spending your uh, valuable time to do this. It really means a lot. And uh, for uh, future, uh, if you have any queries also, I'm saying this to the audience, if you have any queries related to gynecology, or related to autism spectrum disorder, related to mental health related, you can definitely uh, leave a comment below and we'll uh, definitely try to schedule some other uh, session, especially for that. Uh, we'll have an idea of what uh, what next can be done also. So you, get, you guys can uh, leave a comment below and it'd be really helpful. Uh, thank you so much, Niharika, ma'am. And thank you so much, Sadhvi, ma'am, for doing this for us. And it really means a lot. Yeah. Also in the video, there is an important disclaimer here. No, in an science when they ever evolving. So first Kalakatla would uh fact Sulvanga, Adi Kapra, Adi Tapan Kupani, in no or fact Sulvanga. So science up with work ago. Medical science on the other no uh Vidhi Vela Kila. So ten years Kumunadi Panit in the practice when the Ipa one the illa the outdated direct Ipa is a new practice up in Solita evolve by day year ago. So stem cell patina in the information a la in the Kalakatoda evidence of base pani in the experts of Irikra. Uh, interview with us in the video. So this video is being shot in March 2022. So in the version where we have evidence in the uh, research evidence based on this video. So 10 years down the lane, 20 years down the lane, things are happening. Then we have a new treatment in the gold standard. In, in the treatment, we have to prove improvement in this treatment. So we have to do this. In the case of the evidence, Detailed explain Panano, Abindra Nokatla, and the in the video Nanga made Panirpo, so Adiona and the Kurubita mentioned Panikano in an agra. Sharing Lam. Elarko Roma Roman and Dream, the video of a Kadassi Vericum Pathaka, stem cell Pathi, Ungil Kirka, Ella Vitamana Kiri Glong in the video Mulema, the Eva Purunjurkon and Agra. Thank you so much. Nine or video long Lasandi Kre, Nandri.